We have a left indicator problem. So yeah, looks like the left-hand rear indicator bulb has died. Now I don't actually have any bulbs to put in it, but I do have another set of LED tail lights. Now I actually bought this, I think me and Dave bought these the weekend we got the car. As soon as we were confident we were gonna, confident we were gonna fix the gearbox, we thought, shit, we'll put these lights in. Now I had these exact tail lights in my old E53, which was the LCI model. Um, and although they looked really good, there was a slight problem with them. And well, basically you guys will find out at the end of this video if it's also a problem on this model. And I'm hoping that maybe somebody will be able to help. It's only a little thing. Anyway, look, let's get them out of the box and get them installed. Cause if my memory serves me correctly, it was pretty easy to do last time. Let's do it. All right. So we have them out of the box. Now these uh, LED lights, I had exactly the same set on my E53 when I had it back in the day. And the reason I went for them, there are quite a few different styles you can get for the E53s, but I kind of like that these are very, uh, to me, they're very much like a E46 LCI tail light. So they've got the LEDs in there. They do have these light bars and I'm sort of testing my memory to how bright they are. From memory, they weren't great, but I think the LEDs work as both the tail and the brake lights. Standard indicator bulbs, and then we have standard bulbs for the reverse and the fog lights in these sections. Now the lights themselves are pretty easy to install. I'm gonna crack on with it very shortly. And yeah, it's just three 10 mil nuts that hold them in place. Now something I can't remember, I remember having large load resistors on the set that I had back in the day, and these only have these little modules down here. And the little glitchy thing that I mentioned before, my tail lights would flicker slightly, uh, and I never ended up working out. And I did try quite a few different things. Anyway, I'm gonna get them installed. We've basically just got the three 10 mils to get in. Hopefully I don't have to take the sub out. It'll be a pain in the doodle if I do, but I'm gonna get on with that and I'll let you know if there was anything complicated. But yeah, hopefully it's just those three nuts. Okay, so in typical zero to 60 fashion, what I've done is one side first, and now I'll show you how to do the other side. Because there was a few little things that caught me out that I wasn't expecting, but I've got to say it looks pretty cool. So first thing you need to do is with the outside tail lights is the three nuts that I showed you at the very start of the video. Now I did manage to do that side with the subwoofer in place, except it was just a little bit tight and a little bit fiddly. To be honest, if you've got time, remove the subwoofer, it's gonna make the job easier, but, I'll get on with this side. All right, so on this one, hopefully we can see it there. We've got one, well, basically two nuts down the bottom and one at the top. I'm gonna to start at the top first because it's the easiest one to get to. And I suppose we better undo it, not do it up. But yeah, just get it finger loose like that. And then you can undo it with your fingers. It's easy. Even a child could do it. But. Don't drop the nuts, you'll regret it. Loosen off the bottom one, and then just get over to the bottom one on the other side. There's a little bit of sound insulation over it. Hopefully the camera can see down in there. Okay, so I got the tail light out. Managed to not drop any of the nuts, which is very important. You never want to lose your nuts. Um, something I do on all the tail lights I install, and it's something that catches a lot of people out. If you don't clean the ceiling surface, that is what's gonna cause things to leak. And it could be something as simple as somebody's removed this in the past, and that's what's damaged all the equipment that I had to replace in this car. So whenever you're doing tail lights on any BMW that has this type of seal, give it a really good clean, and make sure that you've got perfectly flat metal. I'm gonna spend probably way too long cleaning this, because you wanna clean all of this gunk off. Um, if you can't get a perfectly sealed surface or if there's any corrosion or anything strange like that, if you live in a cold climate, I will try and use a bit of Vaseline, just something to help the rubber seal seal up against the paintwork. But that's come up pretty good. In fact, that was much faster than I thought it was gonna be. So that's all cleaned. Now we can fit the new tail light. Now keep in mind that it is only this rubber seal that seals it against water. So if that rubber seal doesn't seal against the paint or the body of the car, you will get water leaking in. So I just fit them up, try and get the rubber to sit on the plastic and make sure it's well seated before you put it into place. If you get a wrinkle or a crease on there, you'll have a water leak. Now this one, I've already pulled the indicator off, but the indicator bulb has actually got to come up and through the top hole. So when you feed the tail light in, 
indicator through the bottom hole. Actually, make sure you take the tape off for the wiring harness. But yeah, wiring harness and indicator through the bottom hole. And then, bonk the tail light in place. And now you've got the fun job of getting those three nuts back on at the back, which I'll go and do now. Okay, so I've just put the top nut on just to keep the light sort of, so it's not gonna go anywhere. And the next thing I'm gonna do is to get it up out the way is fit the indicator bulb. Now this is quite easy because I've got all the stereo stuff removed, but it, yeah, okay, I'll do it the hard way. So we can go up that way and get the tail light, sorry, the indicator bulb up in place. And I guess if you ever needed to change indicator bulb, this is how you would do it. Ah, I'm locked in. Okay, that one's in. She's in, okay, let's get the rest of the nuts on. Okay, so the three nuts are back on. It is all tightened down. Uh, the only thing I will say with this light, uh, and it happened on both sides, as you tighten the nuts down, just try and hold it in place so it's aligned against the body panels as you tighten them up. If we just where it wanted to sit, it would pull in a couple of mil and it just wouldn't have had the nice alignment. Okay, now it is on to sorting out the wiring harness and all we've got to do is swap the earth wire from where it is in the end into that middle section there. And to do that, you just need to pop this white piece off, which actually, I think I did it with my nails on the other side. Yeah, just pop the side up. And that gives you access to the pins. And to get the pin out, all you need to do is, well, all I do is put a little bit of pressure on the wire, and then you push the little locking tab down. That moves it back, and then you can get in there, and you push that one down. There it is. Yeah, basically get the locking pin down, then you can pull it out, move it over into that slot, clips back in, and do make sure they're all seated properly or the white locking tab, for lack of a better word, won't go back on. And then, oh, you don't want to drop it. All done, and we can plug it in to the tail light. Well, you should be able to plug it into the tail light, but this also happened on the other side. The pins don't line up perfectly. So what I did on the other side, I just bent them down a little bit. And then should be able to get them to clip in. All right, that's the tail light done. Now let's get on to the garnish. Okay, so with the garnish, uh, it's pretty easy to do. I think I've mentioned it, but just in case I haven't, you just gotta pop that trim off and then you get access to the three eight mil bolts. And oh, one thing, just unclip the harness before you go too far, because it is a little bit difficult to get under it. And it's super easy to get to while it's there. So I'll get these three undone. And I'll show you the next step shortly. There it is. She was a bit sticky, she's probably been on there for 20 years. Left hand deck lid lamp. And just like we did with the tail light, we do need to clean the ceiling surface so we don't get any water leaking in there. Okay, and something you do have to do, the Chinese lights, which are their Taiwanese, it says on them, um, they don't actually come with bulbs for the garnishes. They do come with obviously the LEDs and the indicator bulbs, but you do need to swap the bulbs over from the garnishes. So make sure all your bulbs work, give them a quick clean before you swap them over. And then it'll be time to refit the garnish. Okay, so with the light in there, now they're not completely torqued down, but we just want to check alignment. And everything's pretty good, except I've just noticed the foam at the top is actually not seated properly. So I'm going to take it off and move that foam down just so it's not hanging out the top like that.
All right, and they're fitted, and it, God, it looks so much better. I'm really looking forward to getting all the paint sorted on this, get it polished up, and get the Imola Red looking as good as it should, and I think those taillights are gonna look a bit more at home. But even for now, I didn't plan on fitting them until we got all the paint sorted, but having that indicator fail was a good excuse to get it done. Uh, something I have just sort of worked out, these bars that go through it, which I thought they had LEDs in them, which would be a bit more like an E90 style, uh, they're not, they are just for looks. It appears to be just a an LED base. However, we need to turn it on and see what they look like. Make sure they work as well. First thing, the other thing I'm interested about is how many bulb errors we get because we now have LEDs. I'm hoping they have, oh, no errors yet. I'm hoping they have the load resistors built into them. So we'll turn the tail lights on. That's headlights as well, we'll just check indicator. Indicators flashing properly. And I'm gonna hit the brake lights. No errors. All right. Let's go and see what they look like at the back. So there we have the tail lights on and they are flickering. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up. In fact, the GoPro will probably make them flicker anyway, but I can tell there is a slight flicker. Hmm, if anyone knows how to stop the flicker on an E53, please let me know. I ended up just dealing with it on my old car, but I tried a few different things. We fitted capacitors, I fitted extra load resistors, and I couldn't get them to stop flickering. I don't know what it is. It must be something to do with the way that the light control modules output the power. However, they're, they're doing it, obviously, it's a bit weird. Anyway, I'll hit the brake lights, and I'll show you guys what they're like with the brakes on. Boom. Isn't that a more modern look? I love it. And last but not least, they're the fog lights. Oh, guess who's put them in the wrong way? Looks like we gotta do this one again. Obviously, fog light on that side, reverse light there. <laughs> oh God, I'm not gonna film it, I'm gonna end off here. So that's another thing that you should check when you do these. Make sure you get the fog light and the indicator light around the right way. I'm not really sure how I uh, messed that up. I must have been distracted by something. Anyway, I'm gonna get that sorted. And yeah, if you've got any questions about installing them, let us know. The biggest thing about doing this job is switching the wiring round between uh, pin six and pin four for the earth wires. Again, if you've got any questions before you do it, hit us up in the comments below. I'm always here to help. And I will put a link down to these in the description. They're pretty good quality lights. They are exactly the same ones that I had on the X5. Looks like they've still got the flicker issue, but pretty good. I think we paid, I think we paid just under 300 Australian delivered for them. So it's a nice upgrade and it definitely looks better than that. All right, guys, thanks again. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.